Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In the last few months, I've done quite a few videos on accelerating Hugging Face models on AWS accelerators, Tranium and Inferentia 2. We've been moving very fast with AWS and a lot of things have changed in the last few months, in the last few weeks, maybe in the last few days. And uh, it's not easy to get a very clear picture on uh, what's happening. The information is a little bit scattered across GitHub repos, websites, etc. So I thought, why don't we start 2024 with hopefully a complete up-to-date overview of the tech stack from the chips to the AWS libraries to the Hugging Face libraries. So if you're completely new to Trainium and Inferentia, this is a really, really good place to start. You won't waste your time chasing around uh, information that could be hard to find, outdated, etc. And if you've been working with Trainium and Inferentia, well, uh, you'll certainly learn what we've been up to in the last few weeks. Okay, so uh, let's get started and uh, I'll share again all the links in the video description. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe, uh, give it a thumbs up, enable notification, tell your colleagues, tell your friends, tell your cat or your dog, tell the world. Okay, let's bring this to everybody because those are really cool chips. Okay. Let's get started. Let's take a first look at the stack. What are all the moving parts that are involved? And as the slide says, well, this is not an architecture graph, okay? So don't think this shows the exact relationship between the building blocks or the dependencies or anything, okay? It's a loosely organized uh, collection of uh, technical elements, uh, but hopefully the abstraction levels are in the right place. So. At the bottom, we have the chips, okay? AWS Trainium for training, AWS Inferentia 2 for inference. And as we'll see, they're very, very uh, similar. And in particular, they share the same compute element, which is called the Neuron Core. And uh, we'll focus on Neuron Core V2. Uh, Neuron Core V1 was uh, only for Inferentia 1, uh, which is not in scope. Uh, for this discussion. Okay, so chips. On top of this, of course, we have EC2 instances, TRN1 and the TRN1N variant. We'll see what that's about. And INF2. Okay, so good old EC2 instances as you know them. And of course, respectively, they, uh, they include either Tranium or Inferentia2 chips. Okay. Let's keep going up. So on top of this, um, of course, we have the Neuron SDK, which is the, the SDK designed by AWS to work with the, the um, Tranium and Inferential chips. Okay, and we'll see what's in that box. And I guess we also have the deep learning frameworks, uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow, right? Which are both supported by uh, the Neuron SDK. Going up. Uh, we have a couple of low-level libraries and chances are you are not familiar with them because they are still fairly new, um, still very much beta um, and uh, still iterating very quickly. But um, we'll see why these are really important and, uh, and why um, you should know about them. And then on the, at the top we have what I call the high level libraries, and I guess I mean high level in the sense of, you know, user friendly, easy to use, and generally hugging face, right? So we have transformers and diffusers, uh, our well known open source libraries, and I'm sure you're uh, already using them today. And if not, uh, why not? Time to start. And at the top, we have Optimum Neuron. Um, and you may know that our optimum family of uh, open source libraries is dedicated to hardware acceleration. And as you can imagine, optimum neuron is dedicated to the neuron devices, right? Uh, so Tranium and Inferentia. And, um, and well, one line training and inference? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I guess I'm not exaggerating. Um, so this is the stack. We're going to cover uh, every block here. Well, except I guess PyTorch and TensorFlow. Zoom in, look at the features, look, you know, where they fit, why you should care, um, and well, let's get started, right? So we'll go uh, uh, bottom up, I guess. 
and we'll start with the neuron core V2. Okay, if I say core at any point, I really mean neuron core. I don't mean CPU cores. Uh, CPU cores are again uh, completely unrelated. Okay, so I'll try to say neuron core, but if I say core, you'll know it's the same thing. So the neuron core V2 is um, is a hardware designed by AWS. It's a compute unit. And it's been designed for one thing, to accelerate deep learning workloads. The neuron core is at the core, as you would imagine, of the two chips, Tranium and Inferentia 2. Okay, so both accelerators are based on neuron core V2. Well, there are a couple of differences and, and we'll, see, uh, we'll see about that. Okay, but keep in mind, it's the same design. You need a software as a software development kit uh, to work uh, with the Neuron Core, and this is called the Neuron SDK. Okay, so that's where the name comes from, in case you had any doubt. So this is what the Neuron Core V2 looks like. Um, it has five main components. Okay, and we're in, well, I we're not hardware engineers. Well, I'm not. Uh, I guess I, I still know a little bit from the good old days. Uh, so we're not gonna dive too deep, but I think it's important to understand what those things are. So we have um, uh, static RAM, okay? So fast local storage that uh, the core can use um, you know, to, uh, to run local operations uh, extremely fast. Obviously we have a scalar engine, okay? So just, you know, processing uh, computing numbers um, not everything is a vector, not everything is a tensor, and uh, and we need a scalar engine to do that. Obviously, we have a vector engine for typical vector operations like um, uh, add and multiply, or multiply and add, I should say, normalization, pooling, etc. And, of course, we have a tensor engine for uh, general purpose metrics multiplication, convolution, all the, the operations, I would say all the deep learning operators that are commonly found in all our favorite uh, deep learning models. Okay, so pretty much what you would expect, uh, some local memory, um, and then three compute engines for scalar numbers, vectors, tensors, covering the full spectrum of operations. And then, um, and this is really interesting, we have this uh, uh, barbaric uh, name, the GPS IMD, which means Different Purpose Single Instruction Multiple Data Engine. And these are basically eight general purpose processors um, that can run your, your custom code, okay? Because maybe your models have custom operators, maybe you have a custom model, why not? And so obviously, you would need to implement those operators um, because the neuron SDK wouldn't uh, know about that. Um, or uh, you may want to run, I don't know, um, high performance version, uh, optimized versions of, uh, of existing operators and, and you could do that too. And again, uh, maybe for extensibility too, right? Uh, if you want to implement um, brand new operators, brand new layers that are maybe coming later in a neuron SDK version, uh, but you need them now, uh, you could do that, right? You wouldn't be stuck to uh, to whatever the the SDK supports and, and, and the chip supports, okay? So customizability is very important. And, um, and if you want to know more about that, there's a really good section in the in the in the user documentation for the SDK. Data types, that's really important. Um, so there's a long list, you know, 8 bit, 16 bit, uh, 32 bit, floating points, uh, integers. Uh, I think uh, I think we got you covered. Um, so that's important because we know how uh, how critical those data types are uh, for different use cases. Uh, quantization is very hot, etc. etc. So uh, there's a good selection of data types. There are some additional features. Uh, I won't go too deep into those again. Uh, if you want the hardcore details, you can find that in the Neuron SDK documentation about control flow, dynamic shapes, uh, rounding modes, um, which is a very 
a very important topic as well uh, when you're working with uh, with smaller data types. So lots of good information in the doc. But in a nutshell, um, this is a custom design by AWS. It powers both training and inferentia. It's got um, hardware support for um, acceleration across the board, multiple data types, and it lets you customize, run custom code through uh, uh, general purpose processors. Okay, so that's the neuron core of V2. So now let's look at Trainium and where that fits. So Trainium is uh, a full chip designed by AWS to accelerate training. We can still run inference uh, because of course, during the training loop, you want to run evaluation. So evaluation is supported, um, but obviously, I don't think you would use Trainium purely as, a, as a, an inference chip, right? Inferentia 2 is probably more cost effective for that. So this is what Trainium looks like. So immediately we can see um, on the Trainium device, we have two neuron cores, right? Exactly the ones we were discussing. Okay, um, so just two of them. We have um, high bandwidth memory, the famous HBM. We have 32 gigabytes of, uh, of high bandwidth memory. It always doesn't say what flavor this is. If it's HBM2 or 2E, you'll guess, I don't know. My guess is 2E, but maybe I'm wrong. Of course, we need a very, very fast communication with the host, so with the, uh, with the actual instance. Uh, and so we have that through uh, PCIe and DMA, etc. We also need very fast communication between Trainium devices because, of course, we want to cluster those chips for distributed training and, and scale out. And this is what the Neuron Link V2 is. It's a very fast channel uh, connecting uh, Neuron cores, and we'll see how that works. And that's where the, uh, the, the TRN uh, one end variant comes in uh, and usually stands for networking uh, when it comes to uh, EC2 family names. Uh, and as you can see, TRN1N instances have uh, more uh, neuron link uh, capacity, more ports, I guess. So they can just uh, chat with one another uh, quicker. The Trainium devices can chat with one another quicker. If you're interested in performance, uh, there's an interesting uh, web page in the, again, the Neuron SDK documentation. It's hard to find. Uh, it's, it's a little bit buried. I don't know why. Or maybe I'm an idiot. So here's the link, right? And if you followed reInvent this year, well, uh, last year, I guess, um, you heard probably that Trainium 2 uh, has been announced. Uh, details are sketchy, as they say, and I would say as usual. Um, but our AWS friends are telling us this will have 3x the memory, so uh, 96 gigs. Again, they don't say what type of HBM, but I would guess HBM3. And they hope to deliver up to 4x faster training. So we'll have to trust them for now and verify once we get, uh, we get some chips. Okay, so that's Trainium. Okay, dedicated accelerator for training, um, two neuron cores per training device, uh, fast memory, fast communication. Okay, now what about Inferentia 2? So Inferentia 2 is uh, designed to accelerate inference, okay? This is the, uh, the high level view. And as you can see, it's almost the same, right? We have two neuron cores, right? Same thing. We have uh, 32 gigs of HBM. We still have very fast host to chip communication. And the only visible difference, or I would say the only one that AWS uh, wants to share is that uh, we have less chip to chip communication capacity, right? And the reason is, um, in my opinion, that uh, of course, when you do distributed training, you need um, pretty much a, a full mesh uh, of uh, training devices, right? And anyone should be able to talk to anyone. So there's a, it's a very chatty protocol um, and, and you need a lot of bandwidth 
uh, across your your Trainium um, devices. For inferentia, it's a little bit different because inference is more of a sequential process if you if you shard the model, right? So um, so you don't need as much. Well, that's that's my guess. Uh, yell at me in the comments if you disagree. So yeah, that's almost the same, um, and it. You know, it has uh, a few cost-saving options. The obvious one, like I said, is a little less bandwidth. There are probably other things, but AWS won't say. And the reason why this makes sense is because um, inference cost is everything, right? Um, customers spend maybe 90% or more of their AI budget, uh, their AI compute budget on inference, not on training. So inference is very, very cost sensitive. Once you have a model in production, it will stay there for a long time, 24 seven, you'll scale out. So cost is really important. And if there are a few things you can uh, remove uh, while still delivering great performance and improve cost, it makes a ton of sense. Again, uh, there's a performance page. Um, this one is very, very interesting. Uh, it has latency numbers, throughput numbers, cost per million inferences uh, for, um, for I would say all the models that Inferentia 2 supports, um, maybe most of them, maybe a few are missing, but yeah, it's uh, if you want to see, hey, how fast can I run Llama 2 on this and, and what's the cost, you'll find that there. Really, really good page. Let's keep uh, hoping it's updated frequently. Trainium devices are available in two um, EC2 families, TRN1, TRN1N. Um, and those come in uh, in two sizes. So we can pick from TRN 1 and 2 XL with one device. One device meaning one Trainium device, so two neuron cores. And we have TRN 1 32 XL with 16 devices and TRN 1 N 32 XL, still 16 devices. But as we saw, more bandwidth across those Trainium devices and more um, Ethernet bandwidth as well through the uh, EFA, Elastic Fabric Adapter. Okay, so for large distributed training jobs, and I mean large, right? <laughs> Very large. Uh, TRN1N um, is probably a, a, more, uh, a more efficient option. So TRN12XL is great for experimentation. Um, it's, um, it's not expensive. Um, I, I, that's the one I, I recommend if you want to get your feet wet. And once you start uh, fine tuning or, or maybe doing initial training on larger models, then uh, TRN1 uh, 32XL is a good choice. And then TRN1 and 32XL if you want to really scale out. You can find those instances in three US regions. Um, much to my dismay, they are not available in Europe. I'm sure that's coming at some point, but uh, we'll have to wait. Um, and uh, again, at the time of recording, it's US only. When it comes to SageMaker, uh, you can you can actually use TRN1 and TRN1N uh, for training jobs. Uh, however, um, you cannot use those instances as notebook instances or studio environments. Um, so if you want to work with SageMaker, uh, I guess the easiest way is to launch um, and, and run, you know, uh, I would say uh, uh, interactive experiments, launch an EC2 instance and connect remotely to uh, to a Jupyter server running there. Right. That's that's what I do. Um, so I mentioned that uh, the the train devices are are basically interconnected uh, through uh, through neuron link, and uh, and you can see here they're actually connected in a, a two dimension torus, right? Um, and uh, and you can see those uh, you can see those uh, sixteen. Um, those 16 devices here, and obviously the 32 cores, right? And so that's the configuration that uh, you'll see inside the TRN1 or 1N 32XL. And that's what gives you the ability to run distributed training uh, across the, those 16 devices. Obviously, you can cluster um, those uh, TRN1 or 1N instances to scale out even further, AWS says you can go up to tens of thousands of Trainium devices. Well, should I take their word for it? Um, that would be a very, very large training job indeed. Um, they have some examples, if you're interested. I did not include them in the talk, but um, this involves setting up a parallel cluster um, configuration and, um, and running uh, pre-training, I guess, on that uh, on that setup. 
again, uh, you'll find uh, you'll find examples in the uh, in the neural SDK doc. Okay, so TRN one, uh, pretty simple, not a lot of options, um, and uh, I guess only two sizes, right? The, the small one for experimentation, the big one for real life work. Inf two uh, gives you a little more options. So Inf two comes in. Uh, four sizes. So we have uh, Excel with one device, uh, and that's really a, a small host. So again, very cost-effective host for experimentation or maybe even for production with uh, small models. Um, right? That's that's a really cost-effective one. Uh, it's um, I keep quoting from memory, but last time I checked, I think this was seventy-six cents an hour on uh, in the US East one. Um, and if you use spot, which you absolutely should, you can probably get 27, maybe 26 cents an hour. And you can run inference on large models already. So uh, this is a killer cost effective um, instance. If you need something a little bigger, uh, you can use 8XL, still one device, but, but more memory, uh, more host memory. And then if you need more devices, you can use 24XL, six devices, and 48XL with 12. Okay. And um, and we'll see, you know, this might not necessarily mean that uh, you have one huge model running across um, the 12 devices. Obviously, you can do that because these um, um, inferentia two um, devices are interconnected, but they're, interact uh, they're interconnected uh, uh, as a as a ring, I guess, not as a torus, uh, which is uh, what we need for inference. So we could shard, uh, so split a very large uh, model across devices and run inference using all uh, devices, or we could actually run several models on uh, on the same instance. So the first two devices could be one model, and then the next four could be another one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, probably a very interesting option. Unlike TRN1, uh, INF2 is actually available outside the US. Um, and I think this came in you know, the last few weeks of uh, 2023. So that was the Christmas gift, I guess. Uh, so we can run it in uh, in Ireland. We can run it in, uh, in Germany. And of course, we can run it in Asia Pacific, right? So this is really great news. I've been meeting a lot of customers, well, in Singapore and in Europe. Um, showing interest in INF2, but they were a bit frustrated. They couldn't get the instances. So now you can, right? So um, this is also why I'm uh, I'm doing this talk because uh, now it makes sense for I'd say global AWS users to look at INF2, even if they don't run in US regions. When it comes to SageMaker, we can use uh, INF2 for uh, endpoints, um, and um, we still can't get them for notebook instances or studio environments. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we're done with instances. Let's go one level up and talk about the all important Neuron SDK. So the Neuron SDK first and foremost includes a compiler, right? Which is called Neuron X CC. And this compiler, as you would imagine, uh, is going to start from vanilla hogging face models. Uh, or I should say vanilla deep learning models and compile and optimize them for the underlying neuron device, okay? Um, what's important here is uh, you don't need a neuron-powered instance to do this. Uh, so you don't have to run Neuron XCC on INF2 or TRN1. Uh, in fact, uh, it would be a better option to run on the fastest compute instance you can find, so I guess C7 or something. And um, um, because the compilation process can be uh, can take a while, you know, it could be for small, I would say, BERT models. Maybe it's five minutes or something uh, for Llama um, or you know, Stable Diffusion Excel. It could be forty minutes, could be an hour. Um, and uh, and of course, you want to run this as fast as possible. So, I guess comp pre-compiling the models that you're interested in on the fastest instance you have. Uh, is uh, is a good strategy. You don't need to compile the model every time. You need to uh, you need to compile it for a given configuration, 
Um, so let's say, I don't know, batch size, sequence length, etc. And, and, and then once you've compiled that, uh, you can reuse it again and again. In fact, the compiled models are saved uh, and cached locally on the instance that ran the compilation job. They're called NEF files, Neuron Executable File Format. Okay, so once again, that's the neuron optimized version of the model. So you could uh, and you should save those artifacts, I guess, back to S3 or, or uh, in case, you know, you, you terminate the, the EC2 instance, you don't want to lose that precious compilation job. So feel free to use whatever saving mechanism you want. But to make it a little bit easier, we've actually implemented NEF caching on the Hugging Face Hub in our Optimum Neuron library, which we'll discuss later. So if you use Optimum Neuron, and if you log into the hub when you're running the compilation, uh, you can push the um, you can push the the net files back to your uh, hugging face uh, repository of choice. Okay, and we also operate uh, a read-only cache that allows customers to fetch pre-compiled models. Uh, so if you run one of the configurations we've already compiled, then you will save the compilation step. Um, Optimum Neuron will download automatically the, the pre-compiled model. So I guess that's already a good reason to use Optimum Neuron, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so for now, just remember, uh, we have a compiler in the Neuron SDK and uh, we need it to optimize the models for, um, the tr for Trainium and Inferentiate 2. Um, a, re a slightly recent ish feature is called weight decoupling where you can actually compile an architecture so you compile the layers and you can use multiple checkpoints without recompiling so if you compile i don't know your uh, let's say llama 2 architecture you have your net files you run work with that and you want to load another checkpoint uh, you won't have to recompile right um, the architecture is really the skeleton so that's what needs to be compiled and uh, the checkpoints are just, I guess, numerical values, right? So they can be loaded inside and merged with, uh, with the compile model. So the big question that comes up a lot is, okay, uh, what models are supported? So, um, so there's a list in the Neuron SDK documentation. That's the red link. And the reason why it's red is it's horribly out of date. Um, out of courtesy, I won't tell you when was the last time this page was updated um, and obviously i don't want to embarrass anybody at aws but could you please update the page uh, i think it's been uh, it's been a while uh, the next best thing is to look at the neuron sdk release notes where um, you'll see the list of supported models and uh, and obviously the newer ones right uh, so that's how i do it if you want to know if you're interested in supported operators, um, you can list them very easily uh, with that uh, CLI command, okay? Okay, so that's for the model compilation. Obviously, we need a runtime uh, to uh, uh, access the neuron devices present on Trainium and Inferentia 2. Um, so there are some uh, low-level libraries to do that, and we need to plug them into our favorite open source frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow through XLA, right? So that's what the runtime is all about. The runtime will load those NEF files on the run devices and get things going um, through PyTorch and or TensorFlow. And last but not least, uh, we have precious monitoring tools, uh, Neuron LS, to list um, neuron devices present on an instance. And we have Neuron Top uh, to see uh, the ongoing activity of those neuron devices. And a very recent feature is also a profiling uh, capability that just came out. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't tested it yet, but should be very, very valuable to see if you are getting a maximum throughput and maximum bang for the buck. So maybe that's another video coming. Okay, so here's the neuron SDK. Um, I'll show you um, how to, you know, not install this basically. <laughs> Uh, by just using uh, Amazon machine images. But if you want to start 
from a clean EC2 instance and install all of this, uh, fine. Uh, you'll find the instructions in, in the Neuron SDK doc. All right, let's go up one level. The next one we want to talk about is Neuron X distributed. Okay, so this is where you probably um, never heard of this, right? Because it's quite new. So this library is all about um, providing building blocks for distributed training and inference on uh, Inferentia 2 and uh, Trainium. Okay, so go take a look at the repo, go take a look at the documentation. Um, this implements some pretty advanced techniques. So it, it implements tensor parallelism for training and inference. Uh, tensor parallelism is basically uh, splitting tensor, so splitting uh, the, the weight uh, matrices across one dimension and distributing each sub calculation to one device, uh, running all that stuff in parallel and then reduce the results, right? So it's literally breaking down, uh, let's say, matrix multiplication into chunks across uh, maybe uh, columns, right? Um, so one set of columns, one device, another set of columns, one device, etc. And then uh, and then running that in parallel and uh, reducing results. Okay, so tensor parallelism is a uh, let's say good and reasonably simple way to uh, leverage multiple devices uh, for uh, deep learning operations. Another uh, more advanced one, uh, probably more efficient one, is called pipeline parallelism. And if some of you uh, remember. Um, the distributed training libraries in SageMaker. This was actually implemented there, uh, so you may you may want to refresh <laughs> your memory. Go check out the docs. So here we are going to split the model across devices. Okay, so we're literally running um, some layers on one device and another set of layers on another device, etc. So slicing the model at the layer level and and running uh, chunks of the model across devices, and we're orchestrating um, in um, uh, for, forward and backward propagation across the different devices. And to keep everything very busy all the time, uh, we actually do this with micro batches. So the, the batch, the, or I should say the mini batch that you are using uh, in your training code automatically gets split in micro batches so we can actually parallelize uh, even further, right? So one micro batch could be forward propagating on layer three uh, on one device, and uh, and uh, the previous uh, micro batch could be backward propagating in um, in another layer on another device, right? Um, so that's that's the basic idea. It's it's a really great technique to maximize uh, hardware usage. And there's a third one, which is uh, even weirder, I should say. It's called sequence parallelism, where we actually partition the input sequence, right? So if you have very long sequences, I don't know, maybe 2K, 4K, whatever, uh, you actually slice that and run um, each chunk of the um, input sequence on a certain device. And then again, uh, reduce the results, right? This is a good technique to reduce memory consumption. Um, again, this is more advanced. Uh, I think this is still being implemented um, and uh, you can read all about it, right? So I wanna make it clear, um, this is very, very advanced stuff. Um, you, most of the time, if not all of the time, you need to change your training code um, and you may need to change you know, your model layers as well. So this is clearly, clearly not for the faint of heart. Um, if you if you have no idea what you're doing, uh, you know, please stay away from this. Um, it's 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 very advanced. It's very advanced. So I wouldn't recommend honestly using NeuronX distributed directly, unless you know you're a world class guru training on thousands of GPUs. And well, in that case, you're probably not watching this video anyway. Um, and Instead, 
uh, you should trust, I guess, us <laughs> and AWS to do the right thing uh, when we're integrating this into Optimum Neuron. Okay, so that's really the purpose. Uh, this is really, a, a, I would say, a core technology library um, that brings uh, very good scalability and performance, but again, very hard to use. So we'll do the heavy lifting. We'll integrate this into Optimum Neuron so that if you want to run tensor parallelism, it's just a parameter away. And uh, and you'll see some you'll see some examples later, right? Okay, let's move on to the next crazy library, which is called Transformers Neuron X, right? Do you have enough Neuron X for now? Well, this one I guess is a little bit easier to understand. So Transformers Neuron X is all about inference and all about LLM inference. In fact. This one is about re-implementing neuron-optimized versions of the most famous LLMs, right? Decoder models. So Bloom, GPT-2, GPT-X, uh, Llama, Llama-2, etc., etc. Okay, and the list is being uh, uh, updated constantly. I think uh, mixed crawl is coming soon. So why the red line again? So, uh, well, the repo is a little bit deceiving. Uh, this is absolutely not the uh, latest version. There's a mention there saying, well, we're kind of uh, rebuilding the repo, whatever. So I'm not sure what the story is on this, but um, this is not uh, useful at all. Um, you need to install NeuronX like this, and this is what gives you the, the latest and greatest version, okay? Hopefully they fix the repo soon. Um, and of course, you can <clears throat> and should read the release notes uh, to see what are the latest models and latest features that have been added. Okay. So again, this is you could see this as um, re-implementing the best LLMs um, with neuron devices in mind. Okay. Obviously, if it becomes completely custom, it's uh, unusable. So the good news is those models are, and that library is actually, uh, I would say, checkpoint compatible with transformers. So it means you could um, you could uh, train or fine tune a model, a vanilla model with transformers, and then you could uh, you could use that uh, for inference with the transformers neuronex. Right? You could load your uh, your weights inside the neuron optimized layers and they also support the generate uh, api so it won't look too different right that's my point i think i have an example on the next slide uh, you'll see it kind of makes sense so well you could say optimizing those llms is always a good idea um, aws builds the chips they know all the all the tweaks and they they can certainly uh, they can certainly implement those models in uh, in the fastest possible way. Um, so we can shard models across several cores, okay, collaborating, of course, on, on the same uh, operations. And as mentioned before, we can also run several models on the same inf2 instance, right? So we can decide to allocate, you know, two cores to this, four cores to that, and you still manage only one instance. So this could be, I mean, in my opinion, it's a, it's a cost efficient option. Um, if you can manage, you know, one single, I would say larger inf2 instance and, and, you know, push it to the max, keep all cores busy all the time with different models, you know, it could be, uh, it could be interesting. It could be interesting. And if those models collaborate in any way, well, they're on, they're in the same box. So probably overall latency would be better. I don't know, just a thought. So you can look at this one. This one is not as crazy as the previous one, but still we integrate it in Optimum Neuron as well. And that's the same ID. Keep it as simple as possible and, and give you, uh, you know, one line options to, uh, to enjoy the best models with the best possible performance. In this example, we run distributed inference or Llama 2 13 billion on the largest inf2 instance. So this instance, 48x large, has 12 inferential 2 devices, meaning 24 cores. Okay? You'll get used to the numbers. 
um, it's pretty easy actually. So we download the model from the hub using the vanilla transformers library. We split the model into this, uh, I would say optimized checkpoint format where we'll be able to load layer by layer. Okay, so load one layer into the host um, RAM and then into the um, inferentia to um, high bandwidth memory, right? And so this way we avoid loading all of the model at once. Uh, and if you have a huge model, it could fill up the host RAM and, you know, give you out of memory errors. Of course, we don't want that. So we load layer by layer with this uh, checkpoint format, okay? So once we split the model, we run uh, that NeuronX API, which uses the optimized Llama architecture for Neuron. And we, uh, we decide to use 24-way uh, tensor parallelism, right? Which means, uh, since we have 24 cores, all the, I would say, large operations, matrix multiplication, etc., will be split across the 24 neuron cores. So hopefully uh, we get maximum um, hardware utilization and good performance, great performance. And then the rest is pretty straightforward. Load the tokenizer, encode the prompt, and run inference and decode the output. So pretty similar to what you would do with, uh, with Torch generally, right? Um, but again, uh, probably you want to do this uh, with, I would say, hugging face APIs, and that's where Op Optimal Neuron comes into play. But feel free to experiment with uh, Transformers Neuronics. Okay, um, well, let's go up to the final layer, and uh, this is Optimum Neuron. So Optimum Neuron is our open source library. Again, Optimum is the family of libraries dedicated to hardware acceleration. We have Optimum Intel, Optimum AMD, Optimum Habana, and now, of course, Optimum Neuron. Um, so it supports training and it supports inference, and we're going to look at both. So please go and read the documentation, but it's so simple, honestly, that I thought a, a code example would be, uh, would be enough. This is really what you need to do uh, if you want to, um, I guess, update your vanilla training code, let's say your GPU code for, um, for Trainium, right? You simply need uh, to import the Neuron Trainer object as trainer so that you don't even have to rename anything in your code. And of course, this will use now the Optimum Neuron Trainer in your code. And that's all there is, right? And automatically, um, this will set up um, everything you need to do for Trainium. This will uh, leverage the Hugging Face, uh, the, the Hugging Face cache. Okay, so um, we have our uh, read-only cache on the hub in the AWS Neuron organization. The repo is called Optimum Neuron Cache. So if the model you work with um, is already there because we compiled it, then uh, you'll download that and save the compilation time. You can also set an environment variable to um, uh, fetch and push compiled files to your own repo um, if you want to keep things private or uh, just use um, use your own own models uh, in your own private way. That's fine. And this is all part of Optimal Neuron. Very, very simple. So that's how you would work at, at Transformers level. Now, of course, we have uh, fine-tuning scripts as well, just like in the Transformers library. So here's an example of a fine-tuning Llama 2 7 billion on the largest Trainium 1 instance. So 32 XL with 16 chips, 32 neuron cores, and we run eight-way tensor parallelism this time, okay? So if you had to do everything, if you had to do the compilation uh, step, because it's a configuration that doesn't exist in the cache, uh, or you know, you're just tweaking, uh, you would run this, right? You would use the Neuron Parallel Compile tool 
with the exact torch run command that you would run for the actual fine tuning job. Okay, so just run this with Neuron Parallel Compile. And of course, we have Tensor Parallelism at 8 here. And this will run for a little bit. Save, um, save the uh, optimized uh, model locally and, uh, and on the hub as well, right? Assuming you're logged into the hub. And then once you've done that compilation step, um, this is how you would run uh, the fine tuning job, okay? Um, so here we run, uh, run CLM, cash, um, causal uh, language modeling script, okay? And we would pass the Lama to ID and whatever data uh, fine tuning uh, instruction data set we want, all our hyperparameters, tensor parallelism, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, exact same command as before, but this one would run fine tuning. Okay, so again, just like with the transformers library, um, chances are you won't even need to write code. Uh, please look at the optimal neuron examples, and uh, we have a, a few task types that are supported out there. And maybe you can just run those scripts and uh, and enjoy the enjoy not having to write everything. Okay, so that's the fine tuning part. Okay, now what about inference? So inference, I guess, is even simpler. Um, so we have a CLI um, if you want to export models from the hub and and optimize them, compile them for inference too. It's called Optimum CLI. And you can see the, the syntax is, uh, is very simple. So this will fetch the model from the hub, compile it, and uh, save it to uh, local storage. Again, uh, we have a list of models we already exported. So please take a look. And um, hopefully you don't have to do the exports uh, and, and the compilation step. Hopefully you can already find the ones you need here. Once you have that, uh, once you have that local compiled model, then you can see, again, updating your code from um, the vanilla transformers to optimal neuron is super simple. Um, the objects are almost identical. You just replace auto model, blah, 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 with neuron model, blah, 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 right? And that's all there is to it. Uh, then uh, uh, tokenization and prediction works exactly the same, okay? So that's pretty cool. Super, super easy to, to adapt. And so here's an example with a, a distilled vert. Here's another one with a, a bigger, more interesting model, Stable Diffusion Excel. And you can see it works uh, really the same. Export Stable Diffusion Excel, um, 1024 by 1024 images. Save that model to local storage, right? And then we can load that uh, local optimized checkpoint and feed that to a neuron stable diffusion excel pipeline which is very very similar to what you would do with the vanilla diffusers library and then predict right if you want to do away with the cli step and just compile programmatically you can do that uh, you can uh, you can ask for the model to be loaded from the hub and compiled in this api right so the last thing you want is to set up all those tools there is one from AWS called the AWS Deep Learning EMI Neuron. This is the one for PyTorch here. There's one for TensorFlow if you want. We built our own. It's called the Hugging Face Neuron Deep Learning EMI. Obviously, it's got all the Neuron tools. Uh, we try to keep up with the latest versions. And we also added our own libraries. So Transformers and, um, and Optimal Neuron, etc., etc. So this one should really be ready to go out of the box. Give them a try. If you want to work with containers, uh, we have you covered. Um, AWS is building Neuron containers for, um, for PyTorch, for training, and PyTorch and TensorFlow for inference. Okay, Then they're a part of the deep learning containers. You'll also find uh, Hugging Face containers, including, of course, all the Transformers library and everything you need. Uh, we have PyTorch covered uh, for training and inference, okay? Um, and of course, these are the ones we uh, we use on, uh, on SageMaker as well, right? And you can see all of that stuff in the GitHub repo.
Okay, final slide. Uh, some developer resources. So, of course, you want to look at the Neuron SDK documentation. Um, it's got, uh, well, the setup information and lots of technical information as well on the chips. Uh, I reused a lot of that for, for this presentation. Some good introductions to tensor parallelism, pipeline parallelism, etc. So, good destination. Um, there are a bunch of repos from AWS um, with uh, uh, notebooks and code samples um, for uh, uh, you know, containers, for SageMaker, so go check that out, right? Uh, quite, a few, uh, quite a few repos here. Then, of course, you want to read the optimum neuron documentation because... Uh, this is by far the simplest way to use everything we described today. And we keep working closely with AWS to integrate all the latest releases of all those uh, fancy libraries, but still make it easy for you to work with them. Uh, you should definitely, uh, if you're not already doing this, uh, check out uh, Philip Schmidt uh, blog where well, I think you'll find the best uh, SageMaker notebooks available for Trainium and Inferentia. Um, well, that's my opinion. And uh, I have a few demos, but you probably already saw this because um, these are the demos I've recorded uh, a while ago. But if I do more, uh, they'll be there as well. All right. Uh, well, this is really what I wanted to tell you. So it's a pretty long walk through the, the stack. But as you saw, there is quite a lot of ground to cover. I think it's important to understand what every bit is responsible for. Um, and that at the end of the day, if you work with Optimum Neuron, you are literally leveraging all the hardware and software and framework technology that, um, that we've been building together with AWS for, uh, for a little while now. So I would strictly, so I would absolutely let you, so I would absolutely recommend that you start from Optimum Neuron. Um, this is the fastest, simplest way to accelerate your hugging face workloads on the AWS accelerators. And then if you're curious or if you need to, go down the stack, start looking at those lower level elements and they're very, very interesting for sure, but much more complicated to work with. Okay, well, that's it for today. I'm sure there will be more uh, coming. Uh, lots of new models to implement, lots of new features to implement. And it's just the beginning of 2024. So should be interesting. All right. Until I see you, keep rocking.